When Molly Rose Freeman decided to make a statement with her art, she decided to go big and put her work out for everyone to see. You'll see the mural, it's giant and it's hot pink and red and huge, so um, I feel like a lot of it too is just sort of like shock, you know, it's, wow, that's really big and really colorful. She created the 65-foot mural earlier this year near the Burgeoning River Arts District in Asheville. It was done as part of a bigger public arts project that also included music and dance. I think I calculated the exact amount of time, more or less, that it took to paint it. I, it was, you know, close to 200 hours. While a finished mural is big and bold, it seldom starts out that way. The sketch for this mural is actually this thing right here where each panel is, you know, about yay big. And in reality, that is multiplied so that each of those is 10 by 10 feet square. So it starts with something very small, and there's something really exciting about just seeing that blown up. Deciding to paint a mural was not something that Molly Rose entered into lightly. By its very nature, such a piece invites scrutiny, and there is no way to hide a mistake. It causes you, and sort of forces you to reevaluate um, your design skills, your color choices. It's like when it, I don't know, it puts a certain amount of pressure to be the best you can be. Fortunately for Molly Rose, people responded favorably to the mural. They seemed to enjoy her work, and they liked the notion of something positive taking shape in this particular location. It used to be a couple of like uh, car repair places, and then they tore that down last year, and since then nobody's done anything with it. So I think that a lot of it was just like people excited to see something happening there. For about a year and a half, the artist was on a pink and red kick. There was a perfectly good reason for initially hitting upon those color choices. I was working in the, you know, in the winter time when I first started doing these, and it's so dreary during the winter, so I wanted to have just like an excuse to be surrounded by really, really kind of bright, cheery colors. 200 hours of working with pink and red, though, appears to have sated her appetite. After working on 65 feet of pink and red for a month, um, you know, it'd be nice to, to take a little break, maybe do some, like, grays and whites. Molly Rose had an appetite for art from an early age. I had toys and things like that when I was little, but mostly it was like me, coloring book, crayons and markers. As she grew older, the passion for creating art only grew stronger. I've always taken art classes, but I didn't really get serious about it um, until I was 15, I guess. I decided that I wanted to go to the North Carolina School of the Arts. The switch to the School of the Arts from an all-girls school was a key moment in Molly Rose's path to adulthood. I was going to this very conservative, all-girls Christian school, um, and it was a great school, but it was, it was very rigid, and I am not very rigid, so it was not a great match for me. So really, when I went to School of the Arts, that's when I, I mean, it, it just totally opened up this new world. Through her education and then outside of the academic world, Molly Rose found what made her happy. It turns out to be something that is often secondary for other artists as they try to make their statements, the creation of beauty. It doesn't matter sort of who you are, what your background is, whether or not you know anything about art. I would like to make things that are sort of like universally beautiful. To achieve the look that she wants, Molly Rose uses shapes and patterns and the duplication of those elements. Some might find that method tedious, but she embraces it. You'll notice pretty much everything that I have is like pattern on pattern on pattern. Um, and part of it is just that for me, I, I like the exercise of doing a pattern. There's a certain sort of like meditative quality to it. I think it requires a certain like devotion to what you're doing, to, to be so committed that you would spend hours and hours doing the same shape over and over. Uh, but there's just something about that to me that's comforting. Part of the reason for doing the mural was to get noticed and get more work. She didn't even have to finish before the owner of Gypsy Queen Cuisine tapped her to paint the company's food truck. When I was working on the mural, she drove by one day and honked and was like, paint my truck. And so, I mean, that's how it all started. I was like, if you're serious, I'm serious too. In terms of the big picture, Molly Rose isn't sure where she is going with her art. She is not at a point where she will decide to do one thing all the time. I don't know if there ever will be like a straight career path for me. Like I, I don't know if I could ever be just a muralist.
or just a painter, just a something. She does want to get to the point where people recognize her work. She admits a little of that is ego, but there's more at play than just that. As long as they recognize me enough to allow me to keep doing it, I'll be satisfied with that.